Welcome to She Sells Radio. I am so thrilled, so thrilled to bring you our guest today. And I already know that this is going to be such a transfer transformational conversation for both me and for you. And if you are a member of any of my programs or you followed me and the She Sells community for any amount of time, you know how much I am a diehard fan and I integrate Dr. Joe Dispenza's meditations and work into my life and how much I recommend them to my clients as well. And our whole, our whole She Sells community who's doing this work is experiencing some pretty profound shifts in their life. And I've used this work and his meditations to heal skin cancer, to experience really quantum leaps in abundance and prosperity. And our community is having similar results. And I'm so excited to bring you our guest today because I'm someone who I, I'm kind of a gut instinct person. Like I take things on trust and I've experienced the results of this work so much in my own life that it's kind of just at a deep core level that I'm like, yes, this works. It's real. But what I appreciate about the conversation that we're going to have today and what Dr. Joe and his team bring to their, their work in the world is the scientific research behind the effects of meditation and brain and heart coherence that helps demystify what's going on when there are these otherwise seemingly like miraculous transformations happening in the community who's doing this work. And so I first connected with our guest today at my first Dr. Joe Dispenza retreat in Marco Island uh, in Florida just about a month ago. And Dr. Joe brought our guest today, Dr. Hillary Hamilton, up on stage multiple times to share the work she's doing as one of his lead researchers, as the director of donor relations for the Inner Science Research Fund. And I was just so fascinated with the work that she's doing and that the team is doing and how they're creating this really groundbreaking scientific research that demystifies the effects of meditation. And I thought, I've got to find a way to have her on our show. And so she graciously agreed to come on and I'm going to share with you just her bio and background. And then we're going to get into what I know is going to be a really amazing conversation. So uh, Dr. Hillary Hamilton has spent most of her career developing programs to best serve individuals and in transforming their health from a state of dis-ease to one of ease by uncovering the root cause of imbalance mentally, physically, and chemically. And she assisted in the co-creation of transdisciplinary clinics to treat chronic pain in the Empire Valley in California in 2015, where she uncovered the foundational piece to healing, which begins with becoming familiar with the impact of our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors they have on mental and physical pain. And she educates her patients on how the mind-body connections work and how to observe and implement change, which empowers her to take an active role in healing the body from the inside out. And Dr. Hamilton has been working with Dr. Joe Dispenza for the past three years on his life-changing approach to health to quantify his work through research in cooperation with UCSD and Vitamed Research. Dr. Hamilton is a chiropractor, a certified hypnotherapist, research coordinator, wellness coach, and meditation facilitator. And she's currently pursuing her passion, traveling with Dr. Dispenza, assisting in human transformation with the intention of demonstrating through science the effects meditation has on the regulation, prevention, and treatment of disease. Dr. Hamilton is now joined the Inner Science Research Fund nonprofit to help support Dr. Joe Dispenza's life transforming work. She's the director of donor relations. And ISRF launched its nonprofit in January 2022 during a week long retreat in Marco Island, which was the one I was privileged to be at. And they crushed it right off the bat, which we're going to talk about <laughs> a little bit more today. Dr. Hamilton, welcome to She Sells Radio. We're so thrilled to have you. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Oh my gosh. So as I was prepping for this, I thought, where do we begin? There are so many things I want to get into with you, but I want to start with your backstory. And so we're going to talk in a moment about how you got connected with Dr. Joe and his research, but I want to start by hearing your personal backstory. So what got you into this work and what created your interest in helping people really heal from the inside out? Wow, that's a great question. So I've been a chiropractor for over 25 years. Um, I have scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine, and I went the medical route, and um, that didn't really help me in any way, but chiropractic certainly did. So I became a chiropractor, and um, I've been a seeker my whole life as well. So when I was a young girl, I asked my parents to go to a 
a Christian school, even though my parents were not religious at all. But I was just looking for answers, like what's God, where's God, how can I connect to that? So I've always been a seeker throughout my whole life. And in 2011, I saw Dr. Joe speak at a conference and I thought, my goodness, he's got it all together. He's got the spiritual component. He's got the science behind it. This resonates all through my body. This is what, what I've been looking for. So I started doing his work. And in 2015, I went to an advanced workshop and that was in Carefree, Arizona. And he used to dimensionalize an object and so I wanted to do a meditation to help people cross as they were in hospice. Mm. So allow them to be relaxed and then go to the next, the, the next round. So I put that in my meditation and I was working on it. And all of a sudden in my meditation on the screen of my mind, I saw these doctors and I was high-fiving all these doctors. And then I was in a treatment room the patient was facing forward and I was behind a patient with my hands on their shoulders. And then there was a thousand people in line. This was, I, I remember saying, this is on the screen of my mind. I'm wide awake watching this. And so I came out of that meditation and I went outside and called my husband and said, you're not going to believe this. I had this crazy experience. And he said, well, you're not going to believe this. Uh, a doctor just called and wants you to start a practice with him in, in uh, Palm Springs, California. Oh my gosh. So this was the guy that was in my meditation. What? So, <laughs> yes. So that, that's exactly how quick this happened. So seven weeks later, we started our first clinic in Palm Springs, California, and all the doctors high five. So it was, it was my, I saw my future before my future happened. Oh my gosh. And that's how we started our multidisciplinary clinics. And then um, as time went on, Dr. Joe allowed me because he trained me to teach meditation at our clinics. And I can tell you that was the foundation of our clinics. These people were chronically, physically, emotionally um, not right and under the poverty level to boot. So uh, we took them off a lot of medications and helped support their system through natural ways, chiropractic, acupuncture, Tai Chi, yoga, Feldenkrais, meditation, and our patients were getting better. Mm. So we went from one clinic to 12 clinics um, pretty quick. And then Dr. Toby was watching what I was doing with our patients through meditation, through Dr. Joe's meditations. And he's like, what is going on in there? I go, well, you have to go to an event. So uh, he went to an event with me and just knew this is, this is life-changing for him. And he noticed participants getting on the stage, giving testimonials, how they were overcoming stage four cancer. Mm. So he's a very smart man. He has a research company and he wanted to meet with Dr. Joe. So that's how it all started. And um, we've come a long way. That was in 2019. Wow. I, I have chills. <laughs> I, have, I, I have do too all chills. the time. I'm like, <laughs> how did we get here? But it's divine intervention. It's, 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 it was supposed to happen exactly the way it is because yeah. the old paradigm is slipping away mm. and the new paradigm is, you know, healing your body from the inside out, being aware of how you think, act and feel matters. Yes. Yes. And I'd love for you to speak to that more. Cause I know you said that even in the pre-chat, you were saying like, it's time, it's time that the world knows this. And I agree. I completely agree. And I feel like sometimes for those of us who feel like we, we get it and we're in the work. Um, and there's a lot of people around us who aren't right. And who maybe think it sounds crazy, but when you've experienced it, you know, but what I love about the work that you're doing and you and the other researchers and the inner science research fund is it, you're demystifying it and helping it make sense to everyone through using that language of science. And one of the things that I love on, um, on the website for the inner science research fund is you talk about pushing the boundaries of science and poise the question of what if science could prove that meditation upgrades the immune system, that it rewires neural pathways and that it heals cancer even, which there's story after story after story in the community of that happening. 
what is, can, we don't have time obviously to get into all the details of it here, but can you speak some to the research that's being done and even how is that research done? Some of our community members had questions on that about how do you start to measure this and how do you start to quantify it? Because the results don't lie. And I think it's just a matter of educating people, but I'd love if you could speak to some of the, just some of the research that maybe speaks most to you right now and what you're finding. Yeah, well, it's really exciting because, you know, from a medical model, we look at the body as mechanistic. So if you have some type of illness or cancer or problem, uh, a lot of the ways that they treat that is going in and cutting it out, remove the problem. But we look at it from a vitalistic perspective. We are made up of 99.999% energy. We're energetic beings. So if you were to pop a cell out of your body and we're made up of uh, 70 trillion plus cells, if you pop that cell out of your body and look at it under a microscope, there's not a lot of physical matter there. It's mainly energy. So we're energetic. So it's the energetic field that creates this matter. It's not the other way around. So we want to look at what's going on in the energy field. Okay. So energy is your emotional state of being. So if you are living by emotions that are in survival, meaning when you're always focused on my body, my environment and time, my body, my environment and time, that means you're in survival. So what are some survival emotions would be like fear, frustration, anger, resentment, guilt, that creates an incoherent state of being. So that creates contraction. You know, when you're angry, frustrated, uh, guilt ridden, your body goes into a contracted state that creates incoherence in the body. So that's 99% energy. So you're contracted. So what we teach in Joe's work is to take that same energy and transform it into an elevated emotion like love, joy, compassion, same energy trapped in the body wrong. So you express that energy and you expand it out and that creates coherence. Mm. You're going from dis-ease to a state of ease, Yeah. right? Yeah. So you're expanding that energy beyond you. That's when you become selfless. Mm. When you're in survival, you're selfish. You're always focused on you, right? Yeah. So you take that same energy and you expand it out. That's where health happens. So it's, it's now is a time in history, just like Nikola Tesla said over a hundred, I don't know if it's a hundred years ago, but a long time ago, when science begins to start studying the phenomenon of energy, it'll go, it, the research will go exponentially wow. because it's not matter to matter. It's the energy that creates the matter. So this is the new paradigm. This is the new study. And this is what we're going to prove through science and what we're proving through science. So um, the latest study, which I'm super excited about, um, is happening at UCSD in Dr. Hemmel's lab, where he's taken four different Petri dishes. And one Petri dish has healthy cells. Another one had pancreatic cancer cells. Another one had lung cancer cells and one had breast cancer cells. Mm. And he had it in an incubator in a room with six healers that know this work, know how to get out of their own way and listen to one of Dr. Joe's coherence healing meditations, become the healer, which means um, get out of your way and bring down the divine and radiate with a clear intention and an elevated emotion to heal those cells. Mm. And this is exactly what we found. And it blew Dr. Hemmel and the other scientists away that we made a difference in these cells. Wow. So the but, cells were actually healed, the cancer. Tell, tell us a little bit about- Well, it happened. changed the energetic uh, signature of the cells. So mitochondria have, uh, it's an energetic cell and cancers have a lot of energy. They're progressing pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So we changed the energetic signature of the cells just by thought and intention alone. <laughs> oh so gosh. this is huge, right? Oh, it's everything. And, and I want to speak to, I want to dig deeper into the concept of coherence. And you said something that I think is so important about getting out of our own way and allowing you know, the divine to flow through you because this event, it was my first experience being a healer. 
And obviously we get trained on what to do and come in and there's, you know, people who have been selected as he leaves laying on the ground. And it's a really, I mean, profound experience just to be in that energy. And what I experienced in that moment was as I work consistently to get out of my own way um, and just allow that energy to flow through, it was energy flowing through my body. Like I've never experienced before. It felt like I was having a seizure. And I know people talk about that a lot in this community when it really starts flowing, but it was, it was uncontrollable energy coming through. And it was like, what is going on? Like, this is wild. And I, I think you got to experience it to know, to know what it's like, but and then I saw you on stage, you were demonstrating the pineal gland breath and meditation and you and a few other group of um, volunteers who did it. And it was so incredible just to see the energy flowing through you. And I think if you haven't, for me, not having had that experience before the event, I would have been like, what is this? And what is, what is coherence and why does it matter? So can you speak to that some about, about what coherence is and why it matters for our healing, for our up-leveling and for just our overall health and well-being in all areas of life? Uh, well, first it starts with awareness, right? Mm. All comes down to awareness. So who you're being is, is happening moment to moment. And most of the time we're walking through our lives unconscious. We're just a program of the past. So we have thoughts, those thoughts create feelings and those feelings reinforce more thoughts. So you're on this habitual hamster wheel of being something from your past. So when you begin to have awareness of who you're being, then you can get out of your own way and you can become the observer of who you are. So when you can become the observer, that's something called metacognition, observing yourself. So with that awareness, you can tune in to what am I, what's my emotional state of being right now? Am I in a state of love or am I in a state of fear? Where am I at? So that allows you to open the door with your energy to become the greatest ideal of who you are. So when you have a thought that's not loving to you, check in to where it is in your body. You know, say someone is sitting next to you on an airplane and they're talking to you and you really don't want to talk to that person. This has actually happened to me. And, you know, I'm just, I have work to do. I need to get out of, you know, I need to get something done before I get to my next destination. And a woman's talking to you and you're like, I really don't want to talk to this woman. So my, my thoughts are, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. But then I'm like, you know what, this is an opportunity to overcome the habits of my past. So who do I want to show up as right now? So with that moment, I dropped into my heart center, opened it up and just thought, listen to this woman for a moment. And she began to tell me this whole story that I would have never listened to or been open to. And it was a beautiful connection that I had with her on this, this airplane. So it's literally moment to moment overcoming who you're being, right? So it's managing your own energy. So coherence is all about tuning in to the greatest ideal of yourself and regulating your own energy. So from a scientific perspective, you have um, something within your body self-regulation. So when you begin to regulate those thoughts and feelings, you're getting into the operating system of your own body and you're regulating everything. So that's what coherence is all about, being able to regulate your nervous system just by thought alone. And one of the things that Dr. Joe said at the event that really struck me is when, when our heart is closed, we stop trusting ourselves, And that really, really spoke to me. And I don't know what your experience has been like. I know for most of my life, at least after probably early childhood, it was closed off and I didn't know. And I was in a state of low grade anxiety a lot. I was outwardly successful, but inwardly struggling with a lot of different things. And I had no idea about the importance of emotional state and emotional regulation. How do people, if they, if, if they're listening to this and they're saying, I've never even thought about my heart being open, I've never, and they, they don't know, which means very likely it may be closed off because they haven't put a lot of energy or intention into it. 
how do we start to open it up and what, what are the benefits? I know this is going to sound like a rudimentary question, but I want you to speak to this because me a year or two ago would not have understood this. And I know there's still much more I, I'm learning in here. So why do we want to open our hearts and how do we start to do it? Yeah, yeah that's, that's great. So it's with awareness. So when you become familiar with who you're being by paying attention to how your thoughts are, then you can check into your body and say, okay, I'm having thoughts that are based on say guilt. Okay. I'll get, I'll give you an example of what happened with me and how this, this work really impacted me. So I had a really bad shoulder condition and it, it, I thought it was from adjusting all the time um, as a chiropractor, but this, the shoulder was really bad and um, I could feel the pain all the way down my arm. And what I started to become familiar with, with Joe's work is how you think creates a state, a, a state of being of how you feel. And I was, uh, my, my emotion of choice growing up without knowing was guilt. So I always had these thoughts of guilt. If I do this, if I don't do this, what, how's this person going to think? So a lot of my thought process was around the emotion of guilt. So I would catch myself as I was driving over the bridge one day, I was catching myself in a thought where I was thinking guilty thoughts. And I realized it was stored in the shoulder because the shoulder would creep up when I was thinking guilty thoughts, I was storing it in here. Does that make so sense? Interesting. It does. I've actually never heard it positioned quite that way before. So I'm super fascinated by what yeah, you're saying. Yeah. So, so I was thinking, oh no, I I'm late coming home from work. Mm -hmm. Dinner's going to be late. My kids are going to be upset. So this is where my thought process was. And I noticed that this arm was creeping up to here contracted. Mm. So I literally took my fingers and I went snip, like I disconnected the mind body connection and this shoulder healed because wow. of that. I no longer stored that because you can't store your emotions somewhere on a shelf, right? Mm. It's inside of you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you have 70 trillion cells in your body and they're all spying on what you're thinking. Mm. So it creates a chemistry in your body to match those thoughts. So that's where disease comes in. Oh, gosh. If we're not thinking mm -hmm. healthy thoughts, then we're not creating a healthy body. Yeah. And then right. the energy to, to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying correctly. It's like the energy field constricts around our body, right? Because we're in that constriction, that negative state which for many of the members of this community, they, we kind of were talking about this in the pre-chat. One of the things they're working on creating for many of them in their lives is more financial abundance, more wealth. And so it's like, if our energy field is constricted, we're not able to draw in the things we want, right? Is that, am I understanding that correctly? And saying exactly that it, that's mm -hmm. exactly it. So we're an electromagnetic field that's the space around our body. It's electromagnetic. So thoughts go out. Mm -hmm and feelings come in. We're like an antenna. So we draw to us the frequency that we are projecting. So it's like if, if you have a dial on a radio and you're tuning into 101.7 and that's fear, well, your energetic signature is fear. So where you put your attention is where you put your energy. So you see in your environment fear because that's the frequency that you are. Wow. So that's where you're tuning in. But if you tune into like 106.4 and that's the frequency of abundance, well, what does that feel like? What does that look like? That's, you know, abundance is a coherent state of being. And so you are going to attract into your life abundance because that's what you're projecting out. It's, it's, it's a, it's a match. Yeah. Gosh, match. it's, oh, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So it's, you only get what you perceive that you're, you're worthy of receiving. I, I want to speak to that for a moment because that is such a core tenet now of my life and of the work we do in this community. And I'll share, I'll share just a kind of a quick personal backstory. And then I want to hear some of your perspective on this. So part of my own story was I was a um, top producer in corporate sales for a lot of years, but I was stuck at about the same income level for about 10 years, which was good, but not like life-changing. And when I started really working within this work and rewiring my belief system around worthiness and, um, and abundance, 
And I started implementing the generating abundance meditation that Dr. Joe um, has in literally six weeks. I went from hundred thousand dollar years to hundred thousand dollar months. And one of the biggest things that I realized through that meditation was that I hadn't felt part of why I wasn't making that amount of money before was I didn't feel worthy of it. <laughs> and the meditation helps you practice that feeling of worthiness. And to your point, like tune in to that frequency. And then I kind of realized, well, gosh, I'm probably not the only one who's, <laughs> who's dealing with this. And what if one of the biggest things that holds us back in our businesses and in our sales is that we don't feel worthy of making more and you can have the best script in the world, but if you're layering it on a foundation of, um, of unworthiness, or like you mentioned guilt or shame or whatever, like you're not going to make it. And so one of the key things that we really implement with our work is, is the belief system and rewiring the belief system around worthiness, around what you're creating. And I have all my clients buy the generating abundance meditation, like right off the bat. And they, oh, that's wonderful. when they implement it, yeah, they're getting similar results. So we talk about this a lot in our community and I want to get your, I want your thoughts on this because this is going to be so good. So from what I understand, our subconscious beliefs account for about 95% of our results. And I want to dig into the science behind this and also how meditation makes an impact on the subconscious mind um, and get into some of the neuroscience. So I would love to start talking about you know, neural pathways and how they impact our belief system. So can you speak to, we're going to start off super basic, like what is a neural pathway? <laughs> what do we need to know for the, for the lay people, myself included out there? What is a neural pathway? Let's start there. Yeah. So when you have synaptic connections, so they, when they go in and they connect, they only connect based on what's happening within you. So I, I want to say something that you were talking about just please. a moment ago about worthiness before we mm. go any. Yeah, 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 please. So how you go into the whole worthiness aspect of it. So it's not how you present yourself to the world, right? You can look like you look like a person that's abundant on the outside, but it's not presenting yourself to the world as worthy. It's how you feel on the inside. So Dr. Joe talks about something called the gap. Okay. And I think this is such a vital part of his work. So this is, this is called the gap here. So this lower hand would be how you feel on the inside. And this upper hand is who you present yourself to the world. So how big is your gap? So if you feel unworthy on the inside, but you're presenting yourself on the outside as the most worthy person ever, then the gap is really big. And that's where sickness and disease begin to demonstrate mm -hmm. uh, that it, they show up. So what our job is to shorten that gap, be the person that you are on the inside and demonstrate that on the outside. Wow. There's no separation from that. Do you know what I mean? I, I know exactly what you mean and what's so powerful about what you're saying. And I'd love if you could speak to this too. My experience in doing that meditation and in that transformation was you start feeling so good. Like before anything shifts on the outside, <laughs> you, you start feeling so good and finally feeling whole. And for me, it was the experience of like, my heart actually felt open for the first time. And it's like, what is this feeling that I haven't felt in so long? And it was a period, there were about three weeks of that and just practicing that every day before the money came in, before anything shifted and changed in the outer world. But from what you're saying, it sounds like that was, cause the gap was closed. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, yes and no. So the gap is, so there's a, and this also happens with the synaptic connections, right? So you mm. want to have um, who you present yourself to the world is this upper hand and who you are on the inside is this lower hand. So when you shorten the gap, that means you are authentically on the outside as you are on the inside. Right, right. Right. Mm -hmm. So with the science part of it is you're unfiring and unwiring old programs. And in that same moment, you're rewiring a new way of being. And how you do that is based on how you think, how you act, and how you feel. Mm -hmm. And that creates a new state of being. So your personality creates your personal reality, yeah. which is called your life. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And your personality sense. is made up of how you think, how you act and how you feel. So if, if you're not changing your thoughts, 
then you're not changing your actions and you're not changing your, your feelings. Mm -hmm. Then there's nothing new because you're not changing. So your life doesn't change. Yeah. Which is part of what I love about this work. And Dr. Joe spoke to this and he speaks to it in a lot of his work, but he spoke to it at the conference as well of he doesn't buy into, you know, just sit on the meditation cushion and think about winning the lottery and you're going to win the lottery if that's not a match for who you are. Right. So it's, it's about, you have to be it. Like if you want it, you have to be it. Um, embody it. Embody it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm curious to know from you how, because these meditations are so different. <laughs> and I know one of the things that you're researching and the work that you're doing is the effect of meditation on healing disease, on creating more abundance, on, on all of that, and on rewiring the neural pathways, right? So how are these meditations different than what I did for most of my life, which was like the five minutes, just breathe deeply and try to calm yourself down <laughs> type of meditation. Right, right. How does this actually go in and rewire those neural pathways and those belief systems? Right. Okay. So what we're doing in Joe's meditations is we're overcoming the habits of ourselves. So what you're doing in a meditative state with him is you're becoming greater than your body, greater than your environment and greater than time. You're taking the energy that you are as a habit of your past Thinking the same thoughts, feeling the same feelings creates the same state of being. So you're overcoming the past by tuning in to the present moment. And in the present moment, you're using your body as an instrument of consciousness and using that energy and expanding it out, right? And when you expand that energy out, you are no longer you. You're becoming greater than you. Because that energy is, when you expand that energy out, what are you doing? You're taking that energy from a contracted state of being in survival to an elevated state of being into creation. And so when you take that out and he has you focus on the space beyond your body and space. So where you put your attention is where you put your energy. So all your attention and energy is beyond your body and space. And then you go out and you linger and you settle in and you go to no thing and no one, no where, and no time, you're no longer the example of who you've been. So you're, you're moving into the 5D, the, the fifth dimensional state of reality, you're even overcoming time. So you're lingering in the forever present moment. So when you're doing that, you're getting behind thought, right? You're getting behind how you feel. You're tuning into a greater level of being. And so when you're in that space and you linger there and you teach your body to stay in that position, you're, you, you're overcoming your body with your mind because for such a long time, your body has been in control. So you're turning that the way it should be, mastering your body with your mind wow. and you're learning to hold the present moment, mm. right? And the why it's so different from every other like headspace you're using the same level of mind that you've always used. There's mm. really, you're not getting behind who you've been. You're actually letting go of how you think, act, and feel in his meditations. And uh, you're going into no space. So when you get, get rid of all of those thoughts, feelings, and actions, it's an infinite space of blackness. Mm. Right? It's, that, it's as if you remove the sun, the moon, all the stars, and that infinite space is where we create from. Hmm. Wow. So we create from, you know, and, and then it shows up in this three dimensional state of reality. Speak to the, I would, and I know this, this would be a whole nother episode. And I know we don't have time to go super deep into it, but I'm so curious as much as you can explain the science behind that, because I've had it happen. I know you've had it happen with that incredible story about opening up your clinic, what is, what is some of the science, like the quantum physics behind that, that there's no time. So when we're in that space, we're able to create, we don't follow the normal rules, right? We create what we want much faster than we would if we were matter to matter in the 3d. Can you speak to that a little more? Cause I'm fascinated by that. I know the members of our community are fascinated by that. And I just, I would love your perspective on so that. So it's your, it's, so when you get out of the way like that, right, your body's not used to being the same habitual patterns. And all those patterns create a state of being within your body. Those 70 trillion cells are communicating with one another. 
So that sympathetic nervous system, which is that fight or flight nervous system, which controls and regulates all the other systems, right? It's, it's your central nervous system connecting to all those other systems. So when you get out of the way like that, then, and what's in the way is our emotional state of being. Mm. So when you get behind it, then that autonomic nervous system can regulate and control all the other systems with ease because our personality is out of the way. Mm -hmm. Our body can function at full potential. So it's communicating in a symbiotic harmonic state. So that's when the body goes into full balance, chemically, physically, emotionally. We are the greatest pharmacy and we can either create the greatest pharmacy and function at full potential and be our greatest selves, or we can get in the way and live in a state of survival and turn on that sympathetic system by thought alone and wear ourselves out. Mm. So like, like going, it's like, uh, we're a sports car going 60 miles an hour in first gear. How long can you go 60 miles an hour first gear before your car breaks down? Yeah. Well, we are that car. So if we learn to regulate all those different systems and create coherence, then our body will function a lot better. And how did, I, I love that explanation. Thank you. How does that, how does that tie in with becoming no one, no thing, no time and going into the field and creating what we want there and then bringing it back into the 3d? Is it that that's our, it's like, wholeness is our natural state, but the old conditioning, the old paradigms, the old emotions block that. And like, if those weren't there, we could just create what we want kind of like that with the snap of the fingers. How do, how do those tie in together? Yeah. So when we're in the three-dimensional state of reality, which we are right now, you are, you're um, looking at, you know, the picture on the wall, the chair in the background, the door, you're, you're in this present state of reality. So we um, regulate who we are based on everything that's in our environment. So when you overcome your, your environment and you go within, you're becoming greater than the people, places, things, and ideas that we bounce off who we are, right? We, we, we identify ourselves with everything that's in our material world. But when we become greater than that, we expand out past that linger in that space that's when we become greater than ourselves that's when that's where we create from that's when we get beyond who we identify ourselves with as a three-dimensional being Mm. and we get into that 5d where there is no one no thing nowhere and no time but in that no thing no no place is everything everywhere Mm every time, every one. It's wholeness, it's oneness, it's completion. It's no, there's no separation in the 5D. Here, everything is separate. Mm. Identify with every, all the separation. There, it's only oneness. And that's where the three dimension gets created is from that oneness and we bring it down into this dimension. Wow, gosh, I get That's why we like to meditate. That's why you like to meditate and I like to meditate because lingering lingering in that five dimensional state of reality you're connected to everything Mm. that's wholeness and that's the more you demonstrate wholeness the more you are wholeness Mm. right there is no want and when there is no want there's completion and then it's kind of like whatever you well there's no want but you just naturally draw to you whatever it so you'll draw more of completion and wholeness to you wow or abundance, or, you know, all, all of those wonderful things, love, compassion, joy, all those, those things that demonstrate wholeness, and science, and getting back to what you were talking about with science, so how we're demonstrating this through science is, you know, we did our first study in 2020 in Palm Springs, California, where we took a group of individuals, 15 novice, new meditators, 15 advanced, and a group of controls, and we looked at their blood, we looked at their saliva, we did um, questionnaires, and we looked at their heart rate variability, their brainwave activity. So we took a deep dive into who they were. And we looked at all of that before the event. And then we looked at them again at the end of the event. One individual 
came in really, I mean, his story is pretty big, so I won't go in detail, but he was not doing well. And then he hit the field. He hit that, that beautiful field and tuned into love at such a degree that he downloaded the energetic field, like you said, of moving your body and a lot of energy. He was moving a lot of energy because it's that big. Love is that big. And you need to settle in and like, whew, you got to like let it land because we're not used to it. We're used to the other side of it. We're used to those survival emotions. So love was big. And so he felt that on Thursday night after he did a coherence healing. My uh, guess is, is because he got out of the way. When you put your attention and energy on someone other than you, that's no longer living in survival. That's living in creation, right? So when you get out of the way like that and put your attention on something other than you, then the divine can go through you and expand beyond you. And so he really felt, you know, that's why being a healer, you could be healed because you're not thinking about you, you're getting out of the way. And then he went for his walk, the walking meditation. And that's when, you know, light just came through his entire being. That was, that was an enlightened moment for this, this man. And then at the end of the event, we his blood, saliva, looked at his heart, looked at his brain. And what everything demonstrated is coherence happened. His cells excreted all the toxins, the exosomes out of the cell. And what we found, which is pretty crazy, is his uh, plasma, we introduced that to a pseudo SARS-CoV-2 virus. And we actually put, put it together and his cells were resistant to the infection. Wow. So that shows you the, it's almost like he was cleansed mm. all the toxins in his system because his whole system went into balance, into regulation. He, all of his cells and his microtubules begin to isolate and uh, shimmer mm. and they created coherence within his body so much so that uh, he was filled with light. Wow. Wow. And um, his cells excreted whatever was not meant to be in those cells. So he went from survival to a state of oneness and wholeness. Mm. We saw it in his blood. We saw it in his brain. His brain went into coherence. His heart went into coherence. And um, we isolated the protein that um, allows us to be resistant to COVID-19. And they, um, it, the SARS-CoV, it was a pseudovirus that we created. It wasn't like the actual um COVID-19 sure sure and that's the the research there that's available on the website right the evidence is the loudest voice replay that was put on um at the Marco Island event yeah. if I remember yeah because it's a fascinating gosh it's a fascinating story and so I'd say for anyone who wants to like really dig in and listen to the research behind that and the incredible work your team is doing on that um that's the drjodispenza.com website right or is that the inner science research fund no, you're right. It's Dr. Joe Dispenza. Okay. Wow. I feel like I have five more hours of questions for you and I'm going <laughs> to attempt to land the flanks. I know we're close to time. Dr. Hamilton, one of the things that would be so great is you were showing me before we went live, something that you had done recently, uh, because you're the director of donor relations for the inner science research fund, right? And you yes. launched the nonprofit at the event I was at and just blew it out of the water with donations. And you were showing me this drawing that you had drawn and how you were taking this work and applying it to generating donations for this work. And I know our members are all about like, how can I improve in this? Like, how can I use best practices to hit their goals, whether it's financial or otherwise? Can you show what you did and kind of talk through that briefly before we wrap? Sure, and then we'll, sure. we'll tell people where to connect with you. Great. Absolutely. So, you know, this research that we're doing is expensive. You know, it's, it's an expensive project. And we were in this year, 2022, we're putting all of our attention and energy on cancer because our community, you can look at all the testimonials are overcoming cancer um all over the everything from stage four breast cancer lung cancer pancreatic cancer even ms and i mean it just goes across the board as far as all different types of diseases people are healing with this so we need to prove through science what we're doing because like you said a few moments ago evidence is the loudest voice 
So we want to prove through science so people can see that we quantify what's happening in the body when you do Dr. Joe's meditation. So I used his work um, and I'm so excited to be in the position that I am in, in donor relations and, and raising money. And I do big fundraisers and um, we've raised a lot of money, like you said, over one point. $2 million. So a while back, Dr. Joe, I was talking to him. He's like, well, get out a piece of paper and right at the bottom of the paper, little bubbles of a hundred thousand dollars, and then move up a tier to 250,000, then 500,000, then a million, and then 10 million. So I did, I did, of course, I'm going to do what Dr. Joe says. Yeah. And this is how we create, right? <laughs> so what I did was this cute little drawing and um, so what I put is research at the bottom. I put abundant because I want to be abundant. I want to want to um, create abundance within me. And then over here is worthiness. And so when you feel worthy to receive and create abundance, and then research is my my intention. So I did this, and I hit the field in a meditation, and I brought this with me into the five D, and I knew exactly when it happened. I knew exactly what it felt like to get there. So that's where we create from is the 5D. And I came out of that meditation and I actually even text Dr. Joe. I said, I hit the field and I brought that picture in, in the field with me. And then money immediately, I'm not kidding, immediately that day started flowing in. And uh, I haven't even covered in all the bubbles yet that I've collected because I just haven't had enough time. <laughs> Um, You've been busy happening. really collecting. <laughs> oh my goodness, totally. So it's just, it's just wow. happening. And it's, it's because I feel worthiness to receive. And it's not for me, it's for this beautiful thing that we're doing through research. And, you know, how many people are we going to help that we're going to, we're going to actually prevent people from getting diseases with this work. So it's not just helping people that are already in a state of disease overcoming the disease or helping people create abundance it's teaching people that they are more powerful beyond measure mm. go and you close your eyes and you connect to that loving intelligence and that intelligent love that we're worthy of it's in every cell of our body if we're worthy to connect to that there is no separation and then we bring that out with our eyes open into the world this is how we're going to work together and i love so much that you work with women because Dr. Joe talks about, we're going to change his story to her story. Oh, wow. Don't you love that? Oh, I didn't even know that. Oh my gosh. Mm, wow. oh, and it's, it's us. It's we, yeah. we're, you know, it's uh, the divine feminine that's going to make a shift in consciousness. Wow. And um, I love what you're doing and I love what I'm doing. And yeah. um, we're worthy of all of that. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I would love if you could please take just the last few moments here to share, um, share about the inner science research fund, like where people can connect if they want to donate. I'd also love, we, we donate a percentage of our profits to give to give, which I know you're involved with too. So maybe if you can speak to those where people can go to donate and then where people can connect with you as well. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So let me hit on give to give real quick too, because give to give is an amazing organization. I'm a board member for give to give and what we do there is we support our community. Like a lot of people that come to Dr. Joe's work are sick and they might have cancers or different types of illnesses and, and they've put so much money into trying to heal themselves, you know, through medicine. And so a lot of them don't have much money. So give to give offers scholarships to come to these events. And what we're doing right now with give to give is we're doing a prison project where this is so beautiful. Did they mention that in Marco Island? It was the, I, I heard a little bit and I didn't actually know that was part of the work, but I thought, gosh, this is, is incredible. Please speak to it. So what, what they're doing, what they just did is there's a, uh, you know, there's so many little pockets in the world that need healing that, that are looking at things in the wrong way. So, you know, people go to prison to get rehabilitated. They serve their time. They get put back into life and they do it again and they end up in prison again why because you're not addressing the cause of the problem so with give to give and ncs which is neurochange solutions it's dr joe's consultants we've taken a group of uh of the consultants and gone to this women's prison in mexico where these women are a lot of them are lifetime inmates and 
they went into the prisons and educated these women on Dr. Joe's uh, work and, and helped them develop worthiness. And these women changed so much in just such a short period of time. And they went back again months later and the prison is changing. Like the, the people that work in the prisons, the guards, the prison itself is transforming. So Give to Give is helping um, bring this work forward and change the prison system. And um, it's a beautiful thing that they're doing. So you can reach Give to Give um, at Give to Give. I, I don't know what it's called with the, the website, but you we'll can link find it in the show notes. Yeah, we'll link yeah, it you can, for sure. Yeah, and you can mm -hmm. find it on Dr. Joe's website. Yeah. And then Inner Science, we're supporting um, all this research that's being done. It's an expensive project. We want to raise $10 million this year. And I know we're going to hit it because this community is abundant and they want to see this information out there in the public. You know, we're, there's a lot of fear in the world right now. And we know fear creates incoherence in the body. Mm -hmm. And that's where diseases develop. So we want to bring truth forward that we are creators, that we can regulate by closing our eyes and going within and regulating our bodies by thought alone. And this is what we're proving through science. So we have Inner Science Research Fund, which you mentioned I am um, Director of Donor Relations. And uh, you can find us at Inner Science Research Work mm. on the web. And so please join us and, and be a part of our Catalyst community where you can get, you can donate monthly or a one-time donation. And you'll get a free Dr. Joe meditation that he creates just for the Catalyst community. Wow. You'll get a newsletter and then you'll get a front row seat at a, a meeting with the scientists a few times a year. So you can see what we're developing, what we're creating um, and ideas that we're sharing and new discoveries. Oh, that's great. I want to be a part yeah. of that. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Please join us. That's amazing. That's so amazing. And then if someone wants to connect with you directly, is there a good place on social or a great place to direct people from here? Well, you can contact me right on my, my email, which is hillary at innersciencesearch.org. Amazing. Thank you so, so oh, much, Dr. Hamilton. Thank this you. Thank phenomenal. you for, me, for meeting me in Marco Island and, and oh. coming up, um, connecting with me. I, we're doing this together. We're going to make a yeah. big difference in the world together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for being here. And to you, my listener, I just so encourage you to go connect with the Inner Science Research Fund, with give to give with Dr. Hamilton, get involved in this work. It is truly life-changing and send me a DM on social. I'm at Elise Archer, all places. I want to hear about your biggest takeaways from today, from this conversation, because it was truly life-changing for me. And I know it was for you as well. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I can't wait to see you next week on our next episode of She Sells Radio. Bye for now.